Do you wanna save money on travel? Then you are in the right place because in this video, I'm gonna share with you 10 artificial intelligence based tools to help you save money on your next trip. And I'm gonna be starting with the most high profile AI tool that's out there in the news that everybody seems to be making videos about how chat GPT can help you do almost anything from, you know, slice your bread to help you drive your car. Obviously those are a little bit of jokes about the reaches of AI, but AI can definitely help save you money. And so since you're here, I'm sure you've heard of this thing called chat GPT. And you know, it is this uh, notion of artificial intelligence being a chat bot that you can talk to and you can ask questions. And I'm going to actually walk you through some particular questions you might want to ask chat GPT to help you on your next trip. And why I think this is important is because for people who have like used it for the first time or even never used it, they may not know how to use it or where it is or how to talk to it, but learning how to use a generative AI chat bot is almost like learning how to search the internet all over again. We've all learned how to use Google or Yahoo or Bing or a favorite search engine, how to ask the questions in a way to get the results back that we want. And we basically have to do the same thing with AI. We have to learn how to ask it questions so it can give us the right answers to really tell us how to save money on travel. And so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is pull up my screen right here so you can see uh, Google Chrome, my web browser that I've got up here, and I'm in ChatGPT. You wanna know how to get here? Just go to Google, type in ChatGPT. You gotta create an account. And the way this works is there's a little box on the bottom that you can ask ChatGPT a question. And so, um, you know, like chatbots, you might start and ask a chatbot, how are you today? But obviously that's not gonna help save you any money. Chris, why would you ask that question? And it comes back and says, well, hey, I'm a, I'm a robot. I can't, uh, I can't answer that question. So we're talking about travel though. And so a question you might want to ask ChatGPT to help you save money, let's pretend you're going to Kyoto. Uh, and a question I get asked all the time is, how much money should I budget for a certain destination? So you can come in here to this AI chatbot and you can say, how much money do I need to budget to travel to Kyoto for three days? And so what's different about the answers that you get back here from ChatGPT compared to something like Google or Yahoo, those things are gonna just give you back web pages that talk about it and you gotta comb through a whole bunch of them. What this does is it synthesizes everything it's found on the internet and tries to give you one discrete answer. And so I'm not gonna read this whole thing to you, but it says like, well, you know, it depends, but it breaks the answer down and say, you know, if you're looking for hotels, you can spend on average uh, 880 to $200, three nights would cost you this much. How much are you gonna spend on transportation? Budget 20 to $30. Uh, how much do you wanna spend on food? Around 20 to $50 per meal, 120 to $300 total for food and some things for attraction. Then it sums it up for you if you don't wanna read all that stuff and says three days in Kyoto could run you from about 500 to about $1,000. So that's like a pretty good answer, I think. Um, you know, and it doesn't just have to be for Kyoto. You could ask your AI chatbot, how much money do I need for one day in Las Vegas? And you'll get back kind of a similar answer broken down like this. Uh, but you know, the thing about ChatGPT, it's a chatbot. So it remembers the question you asked it. Um, and so you can then respond to it and say uh, like, hey, thanks for, uh, thanks for that answer on Las Vegas. What if I like luxury hotels and gamble? Gam I need to learn how to type better and gamble a lot. Um, something went wrong. Ha ha ha. That's funny. <laughs> so then it says, well, hey, if you prefer luxury hotels, then it's going to go ahead and increase the price of that uh, accommodation right there more. So like you can, you can say like, hey, that information you had wasn't right. Why don't you try it with this and see how that changes things. And so now it says, well, your budget could range from 800 to 2000 and before it was 250 to 600. And then it asks you, cause all these things, like these companies are trying to like evaluate this by the way, open AI is heavily invested by Microsoft. And you can say like, oh, this answer was better, worse, or the same. So I guess I'll say better cause it incorporated lots more gambling 
and luxury hotels. Uh, Meritocratic Mafia on the live stream points out they only have data up to 2021. Travel is much more expensive now in 2023. True, and so with that, what I like to do is actually not use ChatGPT, even though it's the most high profile thing. And what I actually like to use is Google Bard because I feel like Google Bard actually has a lot more up-to-date um, pricing information and Google Bard also has access to real-time Google Flights data. So you can ask Google Bard this question. You can say, what are the cheapest flights from San Francisco to Frankfurt? And by the way, you do have to have a Google account to use Google Bard. Uh, and so it comes up and says, hey, according to my knowledge, the cheapest flights from San Francisco to Frankfurt are as follows. And so, you know, Condor, Alaska, Lufthansa, $1,300. And if you want to connect, uh, you can get it for this. But And then it also tells you the cheapest days to fly are Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And the best time to book is between four months and three weeks before your departure date. This is based on all of the information that Google has in its Google Flights database, which is accurate as of now. Now, you might want to say something like, um, hey, what if you want to go to Asia and you want to say, where's the cheapest place to go in Asia from LAX airport? And so you can ask it that and it'll tell you and say, well, the cheapest places to fly in Asia from LAX are uh, Guangzhou in China or to Taipei. So some budget destinations. Or you might be going to Hawaii and you might want to say, hey, what time of year are the cheapest flights to Hawaii. Oh, by the way, did you just see a whole bunch more stuff come by? These AI things, sometimes they take a little bit of time to spit things out. And so it actually was like thinking after Taipei and said, uh, Ho Chi Minh in Vietnam is inexpensive too. And Singapore, that's actually one of the reasons why I like to go to Singapore so often. It's one of the cheapest airports in Asia to fly from LAX. And so if you wonder what's the cheapest time of year to go to Hawaii, uh, it's gonna be shoulder season April to June and September to October. Um, and so that's uh, based on the Google Flights data right now. Now, you could also ask something like, let's say you're going to Singapore and you knew that was United Airlines Flight 1. You could ask it, hey, how often is Flight UA1 delayed? And it'll come back and tell you like, well, uh, this has an on-time performance of 52%, meaning the fit about half the time it's on time and about half the time it's delayed. It's often pretty hard to find flight delay information. And so uh, Google Bard, you can just ask it and it gives you the answer. Now you can ask more, these are like pretty simple questions, but you can get pretty complicated with the questions that you ask these AIs. And so let's say you're interested in scuba diving, but you're not sure where to start, or you're interested in bike riding, or you're interested in bungee jumping, or you're interested in bull riding. I don't know, you can take this prompt and replace scuba diving with whatever you're interested in and go ahead and ask it. And it'll come back and say uh, where some affordable scuba diving destinations are. So it says uh, you might want to go to Koh Tao, Thailand, or you might want to go to the Philippines, or you might want to go to the Netherlands Antilles, uh, Bon Air, or you might want to go to Honduras, or you might want to go to Cozumel, Mexico. Great places to start. And if you were doing a Google search for that, you'd have to comb through a bunch of information to get down to those five answers. Now, um, you can get a little bit more detailed. You can say something like, hey, I'm planning a trip to New York City for five days. Um, you know, can you help me find the best deals on things? But you can also be a little bit more specific and you can say, um, hey, I'm planning a trip to New York for five days. Can you help me uh, plan an itinerary for less than $2,000? And then it'll come back and it'll suggest what you could do in five days in New York City for less than $2,000. This might be the kind of thing that you might pay a travel agent to like help you come up with something like that. Um, but in this case, it's gonna go ahead and spit back some answers for you if things are cheap. Now you'll notice that this stuff didn't have any like pricing or things like that, um, but you can then uh, say something like this, where you could say, hey, can you create a table with details on cost and distance from times square because I'm asking it about the question I just gave it right now. And so it should come back uh, with a table and tell us, there you go. Uh, 
in this case, this wasn't the best answer because it just came back with one thing and it didn't do this in the best format, um, but it did come back with something. Um, this, these things are in beta. So like one time I asked it this question and it came back with this glorious spreadsheet and today I ask it and uh, it's not perfect. But um, a question that I really like, uh, particularly if you're looking to save money, is I really like the notion of walking tours. And so here is a really long prompt that I'm gonna paste in so I don't type it. This prompt, uh, as I hit the enter button for it to search on this, I'm going to read this to you. This prompt says, Compose a 10-point walking tour of Boston. Make a table. In the first column, the name of the point on the tour. In the second column, walking directions from the previous point. Third column, distance from that point in miles. Fourth column, walking time from the previous point. Fifth column, 20 words or fewer about interesting facts on that. And then after the table, make a 30-word description of the tour and indicate the total distance and walking time. I mean... And so this spits out and say, start at Boston Common, start here, this is how long it is, this is how long it'll take you to get to the next one. And by the way, if you've watched my Boston video, this thing kind of like matches a lot of the things in my Boston video pretty good. And it says that's two miles and it takes 60 minutes. Um, and then you can even like export it to a spreadsheet if you want to. And uh, Brandon Torres says, yes, uh, it looks like travel agents are going to be obsolete with things like this AI. I don't know if they'll be obsolete completely because uh, Eddie asked a really great question. Eddie said, how do I know that the information is accurate? And um, definitely that's one of like the pitfalls of these AI algorithms is that because they come back and they seem so confident, you might think everything is accurate, but sometimes it turns out that it isn't. Uh, and so an example that I want to give you of that is I was doing a video recently on the Haneda Airport Garden, and I've been using ChatGPT and Google Bard to help me write descriptions for my YouTube videos because it takes a long time to peck in all that text. And so, you know, I'll say something like, uh, tell me about the Haneda Airport Garden. By the way, you've not seen the video I've done of the Haneda Airport Garden yet, but the Haneda Airport Garden is a new shopping mall at Haneda Airport. Um, and uh, so here it says like Haneda Garden has 80 shops and this and that. You can dine at restaurants, you can relax in the hot spring. But when I asked this question two weeks ago, two weeks ago, the answer I got included strolling in a garden with the plants and things like that. But it turns out there are, there are no, um, there are no like, Actually, like it actually says it right here. The garden's divided into two zones, the Japan Promenade and the Haneda Green Space. The Japan Promenade is this and that, and the green space has a terrace, rest facility, a walking path, but that, that actually, that doesn't exist. It's not part of the Haneda Airport Garden. It's part of something else that somehow it connected in its back end. So uh, not all the information is completely accurate. You do have to take it with a grain of salt. Um, some other things that I really like to, uh, like here's, here's an interesting one. Um, you might say like a type of itinerary. So including a budget, you could say, suggest a three day itinerary in Los Angeles for my 70 year old parents with a budget of $2,000 and it'll come back and say, Hey, these are things that it uh, thinks are applicable for seniors that also don't cost a lot of money. Uh, and, uh, you know, visit the Griffith Observatory, evening have a dinner here, visit the Getty Center, take a boat ride, visit LACMA, have dinner here, and then, you know, if you're gonna spend uh, $500 for a three-star hotel, and then this is how much you get to spend for food, transportation activities for a little over $2,000. And of course, then it says, this budget leaves some room for souvenirs and unplanned expenses. It doesn't, because it actually exceeded my budget, but, you know, it's pretty close and I think it's a pretty good start. Um, other questions that I like, uh, and by the way, these aren't strictly for saving money, but I think they're interesting since we're talking about this and then we'll get back to cheap flights and cheap hotels and other AI tools to help you do this. Um, but 
One of the things I like to find is I like to find attractions that like nobody else finds. And so you can ask these AI tools, what are the least popular destinations in a place? Uh, and so in France, you might want to visit this medieval town or you might want to visit uh, Avignon or you might want to visit um, Nimes. I don't know, did I pronounce that very well? Uh, but those are great things to ask for, or maybe you're going to Amsterdam and you want to know what are the best things to do in Amsterdam on a rainy day. And with these chat tools, there's no ads that come back. It's free to ask all these things. It's easy to get to it. And so on a rainy day, you might want to visit the Anne Frank house. You might want to explore the canals, visit the Van Gogh Museum, visit the Science Museum, or you might want to go shopping. Uh, and a question I get all the time. This, by the way, this is going to be the last Google Bard chat GPT question I'm going to ask is, what are the safest places to stay in Los Angeles? And so maybe when people ask me this question in the future, I'll just direct them to this video and say, well, you know what uh, Google Bard answers is it says you might want to consider staying in Beverly Hills because it's home to the ultra wealthy. You might want to stay in West Hollywood, Santa Monica, Pasadena, uh, or Long Beach, by the way. I personally probably wouldn't consider Long Beach on the top uh, list of safe places, but the first three ones are pretty good. So again, you got to take these answers with a little bit grain of salt. Um, okay, so some uh, other tools, and I've got them across the top here. So we've talked about two. We've talked about ChatGPT, but again, you want to level it up, use Google Bard. Uh, for me, I find it's all around better than ChatGPT. One of my favorite AI-enabled tools to find cheap flights is Google Flights. And Google Flights, I've talked about it in my, uh, like, how to save money on flights. And so I'm going to give you the short version of it here. But a lot of people, they see this box, they say San Diego, and then they see a place or wherever they're coming from. But one of the best things to do is actually put in your home city right here and then click explore destinations. And so when you do that, now it's going to say uh, from San Diego, this is the cheapest flights to these destinations for a one week trip in the next six months. And so uh, I like to zoom out a little bit more and maybe come over to Europe and be like, hey, where is it cheap to go in Europe over the next six months now? And you know what? It looks pretty cheap to go to Dublin, Ireland. I'm looking forward to going to Ireland and uh, we can get an Air Canada flight or we can get a United flight, you know, pretty inexpensive. Uh, or maybe we want to go over to Asia and so we can kind of like fly over here, say like, look, how much does it cost to go to Tokyo? How much does it cost to go to Sapporo? Boy, it costs a lot of money to go to this airport in China. And so it's a really neat way to just kind of like browse the world and then come up and see if there's any cheap flights. And if there's a few different airports you like to fly out of, you can actually put them in here with uh, like a like kind of like a comma separated list like this and then make the same query. And now it's going to show prices from both of those airports. So if you live in a region where you can drive to a bunch of different airports, then you can put all those airports in there. Now, how do you know if those prices are good right now? Uh, I like to use Kayak to find that out. And so I might say, hey, I want to go from LAX to Singapore. Uh, and uh, sure, we'll, we'll pick uh, that week. That sounds good. And then I want to go ahead and search that. And now Kayak's going to come back with all these different flights that you could book. Uh, but it's got this little R advice thing right here that is usually pretty decent based on AI, based on all the data that Kayak has, whether or not you should buy this flight or not. And it takes a little while to load up that graph because it takes a little while for Kayak to go through all of that information. Uh, now, our advice loading. <clears throat> well, you know, isn't it great that when you do it as a live demo, okay, there we go. So it comes up, you know, it took almost like 30 seconds. It says, hey, don't book it now. Our advice is that prices are likely to fall within the next seven days. Uh, and then if you want to track the prices, you can check this box and then Kayak is going to send you uh, emails every time like flight prices go down. So you don't have to constantly go in every day. And yeah, this is it was actually pretty expensive to go to Singapore. I don't know why so many people want to go right now in August for uh, like 
historical sake, I could often get flights from LA to Singapore for $600, $800 round trip. So right now we're looking at two or three times the price. Uh, all right, I wanna take a few questions from the chat and then I wanna go on to some of the other tools. We've hit the first four, we've got six more to go. So uh, in the chat, um, Lisa says, hey, is there a reason you would use Google Bard over ChatGPT? Sorry if I missed it earlier. Yeah, Lisa, because Google Bard has more up-to-date information, particularly about flights and travel, than ChatGPT has. ChatGPT doesn't know anything about the world after 2021, uh, and Google Bard has a lot more recent data than ChatGPT does. I also like how Google Bard presents it with like pictures by default and things like that, and overall just kind of a, a, a prettier experience. Um, Brandon asked me, what's the drink of choice today? Aha, I have a special drink today. Today I have blood orange soda, Sicilian style made in Italy. So this is a mm, pretty good tasting, pretty strong blood orange taste. And uh, you know, even though it's soda, it says no artificial sweeteners. So I think that's just the blood orange juice in there. Mm, quite good. Something different than tea every day. Yes, Chris drinks things that are different than tea. Rhino says, what do you think about Hopper? You know, since Hopper is just a mobile app, I I don't, I didn't really want to recommend something that you can only use on your phone because honestly, I just, I find that annoying. Um, and uh, so Nick says, uh, any thoughts about asking it to rank things? What's the best clam spot on Cape Cod reliable? You know, semi-reliable. I mean, I, um, in planning some of my versus videos, like, you know, does Singapore have a better subway or does Hong Kong have a better subway? I asked ChatGPT what it thinks. Sometimes it was reliable, sometimes it wasn't reliable. I find it really good to ask questions about like, give me 10 things to do or give me these because it's like, is material to help you source things. Comparisons, it's pretty hard, I think, for it to have the same value function that you do about what the better clam restaurant uh, would be. Um, the Wu-Tang Life says, I've never seen you use tours like on Viator, you explore on your own. I am definitely someone who explores on my own. The time I will use tours are like day trip walking tours. I do like walking tours in cities um, hosted by local tour guides, but I generally don't need people to bus me around. Uh, and... Um, the Wu-Tang Life says, do I think paying a credit card fee to get priority pass for the Centurion Lounge is worth the money? And so I guess that's less about AI and it's more about how often you're gonna get into lounges and if you use lounges a lot, well then, um, yes, it is. Um, and uh, Brooklyn Joe says, I just asked ChatGPT, which are the best beaches near my town in Sicily? And it didn't come up with the one that's the best yet. And you know, it's only as good as the information on the internet that it can source. And so that might be one where the information on the internet might actually not be good about which one is in fact the best. Eddie asks if I ever use Skyscanner. I have, although it's not one of the tools I'm gonna talk about today, I do like Skyscanner. All right, let's jump in to the next tools. And uh, these are ones that are based on ChatGPT. So uh, like all these companies have heard about ChatGPT and this AI stuff and ChatGPT makes AIs AI, APIs, application programming interfaces available that other companies can like wrap it, those APIs and make it pretty and maybe even try to charge you money for it. Although all the ones I'm gonna share with you now currently aren't charging money, but I'm sure they're trying to figure out how they are. So this one is called Roam Around. And if you wanna visit any of these, you'll find the address up at the top, roamaround.io. Roam Around says, uh, hey, where do you wanna go? And so let's say we wanna go to Mumbai. Uh, let's roam. And then it comes up and like puts together an itinerary in a much more pleasing way than you saw with uh, ChatGPT or a much more pleasing way than you saw with Google. It brings you a big picture. It says, go visit this bazaar. Um, you know, go head over to this place, visit this temple. The way Roam Around is trying to make money is they're hoping you click one of these book now links because like every one of these things that it suggests is a uh, Viator tour. 
So I'm sure they make money off the commissions if you do that. Hey, and if you do it and you find the service valuable, then why not? Although I'm a little bit suspect by the fact that everyone has a book now link, um, which tells me that you know it's it's probably only returning me a subset of the information for tours that I could I could actually book. Uh, but you could you can make requests, and here it gives you some suggestions like oh I want something more outdoorsy. And so in that case, what's it gonna do? It would just be like asking ChatGPT the same thing. It gave you an itinerary and it would go ask the question back and say, make it more outdoorsy and it builds it. And you can even see kind of how it's building it just like the Chat API because that's how it's getting the data back. All right, this next one, Trip Notes, uh, they dub themselves as your AI concierge and they've got some cities here and it comes down here and says, hey, this is a um, limited preview, but let's say we want to go to Austin, Texas, uh, and you want to find uh, five romantic restaurants in Austin, Texas. So it's going to go ahead and ask ChatGPT that question, and then it's going to present it to you on this map right here. Because if you get like a table back of just these places, I don't know, you might be like, is that close to me or this and that? And so you can hover over it, and it brings up a picture, and it shows you where it is, or here's another one or here's another one. Um, you can like share it with people if you want to in your clipboard, uh, or you can ask it more questions. Let's go ahead and do LA. And I like this one about give me a three day itinerary for Los Angeles. And we'll go ahead and fly over to Los Angeles and it says, hey, you might wanna visit these things. Visit Blue Star Donuts in Hollywood, visit this jewelry store, visit this Mediterranean restaurant. Um, I don't know, would those be the things that I would do? Probably not, but uh, it is certainly a place to start. Like Egg Slut is a super popular breakfast restaurant. Um, the Mocha Museum, Girl and the Goat, Dover Street Market. And then you can just, you can click on all. Again, you know, you can ask it more questions or more details. So that's one check out if you like maps. Uh, this one called wonderplan.ai says, uh, they're gonna ask you a few more questions. So they'll say, hey, what's your destination of choice? And so let's go ahead and say, Rome, Italy. Uh, when are you planning to travel? Let's go ahead and say September 13th. I'm gonna go for five days. It asks you to fill in a budget. You're going on a couple's trip. Uh, what do you like? Do you like, uh, I don't know, we like food. And uh, are you halal or vegetarian? And then you can go ahead and submit that. and. Well, I guess uh, this is one where it doesn't support every destination. So let's go ahead and let's see if it'll pick up Sydney. Uh, Sydney, we're going to go to the Sydney Central Business District. All right, submit. And uh, that's the joy about these things. Maybe you don't get back answers for everywhere because it doesn't support everywhere. But here's what it says uh, you might do with five days in Sydney with a budget of 500 to $2,500. Is, is it me or is that like a big budget range? That seems like a pretty big budget range. And then it says over here, this is taking one to two minutes to generate. So we've got to come back and see what that looks like. But it gives you some general information about it. And then we're going to see what that loads. <laughs> While we're waiting for this to load, which is actually the information we're looking for, uh, let me go ahead and, uh, oh, there we go. So, you know, it takes some time to generate this because ChatGPT or these things can be busy and it can take some time to generate it depending upon how much they pay. But like it says, go visit the Sydney Fish Market, go visit the Sydney Opera House, and it even tries to tell you some time, like how much you should spend there. Spend two hours here, spend three hours at the Rocks, uh, visit ba ba Bondi, visit Bondi Beach, I think that's how you pronounce it, visit the zoo, visit Chinatown, visit the Royal Botanic Garden, the Art Gallery, Darling Harbor, Blue Mountains, Paddington Markets, Queen Victoria Building, and World Square, and this is how much you would expect to spend. And actually, I'll say, having recently been in Sydney, I think this is actually a pretty good agenda, like itinerary for Sydney. So of the ones I've just played with the most, I've found this one is actually giving back some of the uh, answers that are like most reasonable. Uh, and then Kathy points out, it even tells you the electricity you need to plug in. Isn't that nice? Yeah, it gives you some just basic factoids of general info. So that's cool. Uh, all right, uh, we've gone through six of the tools. Let's go on to seven. This one is called um, Plan by 
weeks ago. And so like all these, it says, hey, where do you wanna go? Uh, and it gives you some suggestions. So let's go ahead and type in Las Vegas. And then it says, uh, hey, here's some things you, you might wanna type in. It gives you some suggestions. But a lot of these just have this open text box and you're like, I don't know, maybe we'll say gambling at casinos. And this is my itinerary for gambling at casinos for Las Vegas. And you see it's spitting that back out to me the same way it's getting the chat off that API. But, uh, you know, start our day at the Las Vegas Strip, visit the buffet, uh, visit the Venetian, visit this. And boy, how are they trying to make money? Uh, they, looks like they're trying to make money based on uh, having you book some of the hotels that come back here and showing you some of the hotel reviews, right? Everybody's gotta figure out a way to make money on their thing, and so the earlier one we saw, they were trying to make money, have you booking tours. Here, they wanna make money from you booking hotels. This one, I think, is particularly interesting. Uh, Curioso is unique because this one is to help you plan a road trip. In particular, this is an AI tool if you're looking to do a road trip. So let's say you're looking to do a road trip in the United States, uh, and um, obviously here's some defined ones, but let's say we are looking to do a road trip, starting point, finishing point, let's say it's uh, Santa Monica, and then the finishing point is going to be, um, can I type it in? Uh, delete, let's, let's see, one point here. Okay, Santa Monica, Santa Monica, get trip, Please confirm you're not a bot. I'm not a bot. Verify boats. I think those are all the boats. Are those all the boats? Maybe this one has boats. Maybe this one has boats. Verify. Did I do good? I am not a robot. Trip plans are coming in 100 seconds. That's a long time. All right, so uh, we need to mm, have a drink and take some questions while that comes back with our plan. Uh, Nicholas Rogers says I might use that for a Route 66 trip, assuming you've got some time for it to come back indeed. Uh, and uh, Kathy says this is amazing. I would have never thought these things were around. I normally just do a Google search. Yeah, and a Google search really isn't gonna turn up much of this information because none of this information is like generated on web pages. It all only comes back after you do a query. Uh, okay, so the answers came back after 36 seconds, so let's go ahead and see that. And it says, hey, from Santa Monica, um, here's like seven trip plans you might wanna take. One for two days, one for 14 days, one for 12 days in these various places. So let's go ahead and see what, and it kind of tells you kind of like roughly where these go. So let's check out the 12 day trip from Santa Monica. And it says like, hey, here's a road trip that you can take from Santa Monica up through Death Valley, stopping at eight different points, kind of like along the desert, things you want to see and do. Uh, and if we go back, they, like we can even put in more detail about number of travelers and our budget. And you can see like in these little things, you can see little um, examples of like the map of where you might go. So this one is one that goes up kind of like through California's um, some of the parks, some of the big parks that are up there and then comes down like along the coast of so Central Valley up and back. Um, so I think this is neat, tells you about how long to go and what does the super trip button do? Super trip, I guess it tells you all those things and you can adjust it if you want to. All right, so let's go ahead and hit the last AI tool. This one is called Trip Planner AI and they say uh, they help you create your perfect trip. So they, this one, they want you to pay to use it. You get a couple of trips for a free trial. So let's use our free trial here. Um, where do we wanna go? We want to go to, uh, let's say we wanna go to Paris. How's that sound? We wanna go to Paris, France. When does our trip start? It's gonna start in October and our trip's gonna be seven days. Create my plan. What would I do in Paris? Uh, so here we go, we got Paris and then um, you know, like you can search for flights, you can depart from maybe, uh, ha, search for available flights from your city. It doesn't take airport codes. Let's search from Los Angeles and search. And then here is gonna like give you links to try to search it from this place. So this is trying to get you to book uh, 
like flights maybe. And so search for hotels, but kind of like their AI thing would be down here where you can get your itinerary, say, okay, we're going with a big family. We're going with six people, our budget per day. Oh, to put that in, costing more money. Okay, what do I want to do? Uh, kid friendly, ah, uh, man, it's gonna cost me money to say kid friendly. Okay, well, we'll just, <laughs> we'll just go ahead and generate that with the defaults. And uh, here, what do we go in the itinerary? We can expand these things and say, uh, visit the Eiffel Tower, visit the Louvre, visit the Champs Elysees, take an evening cruise, visit the palace, visit Luxembourg Garden. This one definitely seems to be kind of like the most graphically developed, probably because they spent the most money on it, probably because they're looking to get back the most money. Uh, and so Points Traveler says, will you include links to these in the description? Uh, yes, when this video's done in the archive, I'll put links to all these for your easy clicking experience. Uh, now, before we go to Q&A, I want to just kind of like share some future trends coming up about AI. Um, and this was actually, so ChatGPT, heavily invested by Microsoft, and uh, Microsoft has a travel, transportation, and hospitality division their director of that division was speaking at a conference. Uh, and so a couple of things he said that we should be on the lookout for in the world of AI, just in our travels in the future, are customer message summaries. Um, so like if you call a voicemail box, instead of a human listening to it, they might use an AI to generate a summary of what the heck you said on that voicemail and then just send the text of the summary of what you asked to a human so that they don't have to listen to the whole thing. Uh, also that hotel sales emails, maybe that like when they send you an email back, it's like, thanks for booking, what do you need? You know, that might not actually come from a person. Those things might be generated from uh, an AI. So those are things to look out for. Um, you know, but like, I think another thing to look out for related to travel and we hear about the metaverse and, you know, uh, augmented reality glasses and virtual reality glasses, like Apple is releasing their new kind of VR glasses. I mean, you know what? Maybe we're going to have a Star Trek holodeck someday and we can save a lot of money on travel because we don't even have to go. I don't know that we're going to see that in our lifetime because, you know, maybe you can see it, but I still don't think we're going to get to the point uh, in our lifetimes where we're going to see like a Star Trek style replicator where we can uh, taste the food and smell the scooters as they go by. And it's one thing to see it. It's another thing to experience it entirely. Well, fellow explorers, now you know how to save money on travel. You know some things to look for on the horizon. And let's go ahead and open it up to Q&A time. Fellow explorers, it is now Q&A time. If you've got a question, I've got an answer. Uh, right, Brooklyn Joe says, one thing that these answers don't account for is they don't account for strikes or weather, which is really true. So all, like all these models, they don't really have a knowledge of the world right now. So if you search for like, what should I do in Paris? They're not gonna come back and be like, don't go because there's a worker strike that, you know, maybe a human or something like that would actually tell you. So that is a really uh, great point to be aware of. Alex says, uh, hey, have you heard of The Reluctant Traveler with Eugene Levy? Pretty fun show. Seems like a show you would love. I've not, but uh, hey, I'll take a look at it. Thanks for the tip. Um, Points Traveler says, have you used AI to help you with credit card points? I think, um, I don't know, you know, we could ask Google Bard and say like, what's the best transfer partner to use to book these sorts of tickets on this airline? I think it would give decent answers, but I think that that's another one that like, it changes so often and so quickly that it might be hard to get the perfect answer, but it might be starting, like if you wanna know like, hey, what uh, miles or points transfer to Japan Airlines miles, I think that's definitely something you could ask uh, ChatGPT or Google Bard. Uh, Ross says, I've not heard you speak about Israel. You ever been? I've never been to Israel, so I have no suggestions, but thanks for asking. Uh, <laughs> Linda says, maybe I shouldn't have just spent $185 on a seven day London itinerary. Linda, if it was worth it for you, then by all means, um, but I think with the tools that we have available, it's pretty easy to like generate reasonable itineraries ourselves, just spending a few minutes uh, in some of these AI tools. 
Uh, Stargazer says, I missed your show. The good news is there's an archive you can watch, Stargazer. And Kathy says, hey, if you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button. Yes, if you are enjoying it, uh, definitely please hit the thumbs up button. Helps me with the YouTube algorithm. It lets YouTube know that you like this video, so they should share it with others. There's a 116 of you on and 56 likes, and so I would love to see that number get up, and I've already seen it go up. Just a few more. So for those of you hitting the thumbs up button, thank you very much. Um, uh, my dad, Electric Rick, says, I would like to ask Google Bard what a good staycation would be for me. Uh, and uh, a good staycation, you know, probably in San Diego would be to visit uh, the cottages on Crystal Pier. That sounds like a pretty nice staycation for the electric rickster <laughs> brooklyn joe says i liked it so much i hit it three times thank you very much brooklyn joe i appreciate the thumbs up grant says where's the next destination for a favorite traveling family hmm i don't know what the next destination is going to be but i can certainly tell you a couple we have uh planning in the works because i never know whether one will be next versus some of these, uh, but we have a trip planned to lovely Santa Barbara, California, uh, and we also have a Disney cruise planned coming up, heading down to Ensenada in Mexico. So those are the two that we have coming up on the horizon. Videos you're gonna see coming out still over the next weeks and months. Uh, my Japan series, my Japan vlog series is gonna continue. I've got three more. Japan vlogs coming out. I just published our Atami vlog last week. This week, I'm gonna publish our vlog in Ito, which is further down the Izu Peninsula. Coming up after that is Fuji Five Lakes. And then finally, to complete our vlog series from our three-week Asia adventure will be Tokyo, our couple of days in Tokyo. And then I've still got a whole bunch more videos from Taiwan and from Singapore that aren't the vlogs that are more the informational style things that are going to be coming out too. Uh, so be prepared for that bonanza. Um, Randy says, have you ever been to Positano, Italy, right? Like, um, off the, like off of Naples, I think like a pretty, I think I've been there. Is that where it is? We're thinking about the same place. Amazing. Like, you know, kind of like the hills or the mountains that have all the houses on them and the beach down at the bottom. Amazing food. Uh, Emmett says, Skynet is here. We are all doomed. We are doomed indeed. I, we just, we need to make sure to not give ChatGPT or Google Bard access to any weapons. That would be a disaster. Kathy says, I'll have to give you some tips for the Disney cruise. Kathy, I am all ears, all mouse ears in that case for the Disney cruise. Uh, Codgeful of Love says, looking forward to your cruise video. You can be sure there will be a cruise video. Uh, James says, I hope AI doesn't replace everything. I would miss the human interaction. I don't think AI is going to replace everything. And actually, one of the things I had written down here that I kind of didn't talk about, but I'll hit this now, uh, is in uh, Japan. They had a hotel called the Henna Hotel in Tokyo. Uh, and I guess they've been in a few different places. Uh, but they, in Japan, this hotel that was like a robotic hotel that just like did away with most of their staff and had robots to like check you in at the front desk and all that stuff. Uh, and I don't, I don't think it's doing that well. I don't think people like love that hotel all that much. I think people are like, I think a hotel that has people that work at it is better than the hotel that has robots that work at it. Uh, but related to this, the Wu-Tang Life says, what do you think of the capsule hotels in Japan? I have not stayed in a capsule hotel. I like my comfort and I like to sleep well and I don't like to listen to other people snoring. And so I think a capsule hotel is really great if you don't have much money and you're, you sleep like a rock, you know, knock yourself out in a capsule hotel. Uh, I like a room that's quiet, that I don't hear other people sleeping. <clears throat> and having watched a lot of reviews of capsule hotels, uh, Kara and Nate did one recently. Uh, they were like, those places are deathly hot. And I often find Jap many Japanese hotels, <clears throat> for my liking, the temperature is set too hot. Uh, and so I am often looking for ones that are like particularly cool with good air conditioning. Uh, Lisa says, are there any destinations on your bucket list? Oh, there's plenty of destinations on our bucket list. We uh, would definitely like to go to Scotland. We had a Scotland trip on our agenda, um, but never made it out there. Uh, I'd also like to go to Finland. Uh, we'd like to do Iceland. Like a lot of these like cold weather things. And then something we also want to do is recently we've been doing um, Canada, like to Vancouver, because they've started direct flights from 
Orange County to Vancouver, uh, but we'd like to like explore some of the other big cities in Canada, Toronto, Montreal, uh, and also visit Banff. It's the hardest thing to pronounce, uh, B-A-N-F-F, because -F, uh, I think there's some nice Fairmont hotels in Banff that I'm looking forward to staying at. Grant says, Finland is next for me. That's exciting, Grant. Uh, I look forward to hearing reports on Finland. Uh, Smoke and Thrills says, theme park vlogger here. Any tips for theme park travel? I love your stuff, long time follower. Um, boy, that's like a generic question. By the way, thank you uh, for loving the stuff and being a long time follower, but tips on, on theme park travel, you know, is always the, I feel like theme park food is like somewhere between mediocre and awful, you know? And so it's just like trying to find the best food, where is it in the theme park? You know, there's always that like hidden gem to find, um, but that's always like, for me, the thing I have to do is, you know, so I'm always the one where like, even if I go to like Disney World or something, I want a car because I want like to be able to escape all the um, expensive food that I'm a captive of and be able to like actually get some. Uh, Brooklyn Joe says, are you guys big roller coaster fans? I like roller coasters. OC girl, not so much. Yeah, she gets the, she gets the motion sickness on the roller coasters. I think that as I've gotten older, I definitely can't handle them as much as I used to. If you watched my, um, California's Great America theme park tour, which was kind of the last theme park uh, that I rode a lot of roller coasters in because I was up in the Bay Area solo trip for a couple days and had a few hours to kill before a flight. And so I stopped into this theme park and it was a Friday after a storm. And so there was like nobody there. So I could ride all of the roller coasters in California's Great America in like the span of an hour, which was like five or seven roller coasters. So they were all just walk right on. And after the last roller coaster, I was like, oh, I don't I don't know if I can go on my flight. I feel sick. Um, the good news is an hour later, I was fine. But uh, I don't think, like, those roller coasters are really designed to go on back to back to back to back because usually you're waiting in, like, a line of 30 minutes or an hour before you get the next one. So uh, that was a little too much shaking up of my brain. Meritocratic Mafia says, I've never, I've heard the Banff Fairmont Hotel is haunted. Not sure how true that is. All right, we're going to have to bring our ghost repellent when we go to the Banff Fairmont Hotel. Uh, Janelle says, skip Winnipeg. Yeah, I've heard Winnipeg's pretty cold, like negative 20 or something like that. Yeah, Winnipeg. Winnipeg is just like the joke of Canada, right? Of like, who goes to Winnipeg? Nobody goes to Winnipeg. Um, is anybody on the live stream or the archive from Winnipeg? And if so, why should, some, should I go to Winnipeg? What's there? You know, a popular, there's like a popular YouTube channel now about some people who live in like, Siberia, like in Russia or something. And it's like the city is known as like the coldest city in the world. And they have videos about like how people live in the coldest city in the world. And if you live in the coldest city in the world, you know, you only take a bath once a week because it's so cold. Uh, and like these people who live in the country in the coldest city in the world, they, um, they don't have running water because the pipes freeze. And so to take a bath or a shower, they have this like outdoor wooden shack that they start a fire in and then bring in like snow to melt it, to make a bath that they heat up. And then the whole family takes a bath in that bath water because it's so hard to like make a bath. Anyway, that is not some place that I'm moving anytime soon. Uh, Sabine says, I uh, just quit my job uh, for the end of the year and like to be an all time traveler any suggestions? Um, sounds good. I mean, suggestions, where to go, how to save money. I don't know. There could be a lot of different suggestions. Uh, I would just say with that, you know, you're living on like a, definitely like a defined budget. So that's where you want to, you know, take probably the budget accommodation so you can go even farther. Uh, Janelle says, I'm in Winnipeg and I don't recommend. And Meritocratic Mafia says, Winnipeg is the murder capital of Canada. Wow. I thought it maybe the suicide capital because it's so cold, but interesting that it's the murder capital too. Uh, and Smoke and Thrill says Winnipeg is whiny peg. Ah, uh, am I right? Uh, all right, looks like a bunch of uh, Canadian uh, Canadian chat. Emmett Brown says that sounds horrific. One bath a week, nasty. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and pass on that. Uh, Nicholas Rogers says the Twin Cities also gets cold weather, kind of like a diet Canada. 
Uh, and Janelle agrees that there is lots of crime. Winnipeg, you know, when I think of Canada, I don't think of crime. Like I don't think of I don't think of Canadians as I think of Canadians as like friendly, jovial people. But I guess when they get cold, that's when the crime comes out. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and go to giveaway time. Yes, it's the time you've been waiting for. It's time for the giveaway. All right, fellow explorers, win every video. I always give away a Yellow Productions Crew shirt, and so if you would like to win one, you can answer my question right here correctly, and if you're the first person to answer it, I will send this shirt to you anywhere in the world. And my question for you is, I asked earlier in this video, RAI, to make a 10-point walking tour of what city? If you answer that question correctly, you will win that shirt shipped to you. If you didn't win it and you want to buy one, you can pick one up at the Yellow Production Shop. You'll find the link right there or in the description below. And if you wonder, Chris, when is the next live stream? You can head over to the Yellow Productions update. You'll be the first to know. I don't know if I'm going to do one next week because next week is San Diego Comic Con, which I'm definitely going to be there. Uh, so if you're at Comic Con, you can take a look out for me. All right, and... And now we have a winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right, congratulations to Panjo. Panjo says Boston, and Boston is indeed it. And uh, Panjo, even right before Panjo said Boston, said Boston Orange, but then was the first one to connect it to just Boston. So Panjo, send me an email. Let me know what shirt you want, where you want to go, and I'll get that headed out to you. Uh, Kathy came in number two, and Brooklyn Joe came in number three. Well, fellow explorers, it is always a pleasure hanging out with all y'all. I always learn something new uh, from y'all, including things about Winnipeg that I didn't even know. Uh, and uh, as usual, I'm not going to say goodbye because I'm going to see you in the next video.